Hello, this is Andrew with Missing Remote, and this is a set of Seagate Exos 12 terabyte Fort X14 Enterprise hard drives. I needed to add storage to my file server that I use for work, and decided to go with these instead of the Iron Wolf NAS drives that Seagate makes. And the main reason why I did that is because these are better in almost every way, and they're cheaper. If you compare this with a um, regular 7200 RPM NAS drive from Seagate with 256, all the, all the specs are the same when it comes to the basic, the size, the, the RPMs, and the cache, where these are faster. And they have a five-year warranty where the Iron Wolf only has a three-year warranty unless you go to the Iron Wolf Pro, which is significantly more money than these. So. These are a relative bargain compared to the um, small office, home office, Iron Wolf drives, and a massive bargain compared to the uh, Pro Iron Wolf drives. These come; these drives support either 4K or 512 emulated, or 512E, or 4KN sectors. I'm not sure what format they shipped in, so that's one of the things that I'll have to check. So let's get these opened up. We'll have a quick look at the drive and then we'll throw them in the, in the server. I don't really like these, the new packaging that they use for these. It's not as usable or reusable, I should say, because I like to keep these around if I ever need to send them off somewhere or eventually when I resell the drive. Um, this doesn't seal, it's a flimsy anti-static bag, but I mean, I guess it is what it is. So this is the drive. It looks like a hard drive. There's really nothing that spectacular about it. As I mentioned before, under, underneath everything, the drive is a 4K drive. It can operate in two modes, either as 512 emulated or native 4K. The, in my case, the drive shipped in 512 mode, I, I wanted it to work in 4K mode. So this is going to document quickly how we change that. It's pretty easy once you know how. It wasn't super easy to figure out how to do it. You can confirm using PowerShell, and this should work on Windows 10 or Windows Server operating systems. I'm putting this in a server, so that's what I used it in, but I verified that the commands work in Windows 10. I'll, I'll, I'll put those the commands themselves so you don't have to you can copy and paste them in on the uh, site and put a link to those commands in the description below. So basically, you can use the get di physical disk commandlet in PowerShell to confirm that the drive is f what, what the configuration of the drive is. In this case, it was 512, as I noted. And then we're going to use the tool from Seagate, which is C chest format, to essentially do the same thing and then change the format of the drive. So once we've confirmed that it isn't the way we want it to be with PowerShell, we're going to use the C chest format tool and I'll put a link to that um, on the site as well. Um, first we need to do is get, once we have that, we need to get the handle or ID of the drive itself and to do that you just run C chest format, you know, whatever the full path of the executable is, hyphen hyphen scan. And then we find the ID of the drive, which in this case is PD11. Once we have that, we can confirm the sector size of the drive, and then we'll use the show supported formats command to ensure that uh, the drive actually supports 4K native, which we, we know that it does, but just you know to be sure. One of the things that hung me up a little bit was that it's slightly different to do this with an SAS attached drive versus a SATA attached drive. I have SATA attached drives. I don't know why it's different with SAS drives, but it is. And to do that, you use the show supported sector sizes command, which is what you can see up here where I'm messing around trying to figure that out. Once you know that the drive ports 4K, we gotta change it, or we can change it. To do that, you run the command 
set sector size to 4096. And then you have to conf add the flag confirm this will erase data. Or the confirm flag this will erase data to the um, command line as well. Here again, the there's a slight difference between SAS and SATA attached drive. This is a SATA attached drive, so this is the right command to do it with a SATA attached drive. It takes a little while for that to happen, and then once it's done, the drive will still show as a 512 drive, and then you need to disconnect the drive from the system or reboot the system in order for that new that sector size, the updated sector size, to take effect. But once you've done that, then you can run the commands and confirm that everything is the way that it's supposed to be with the drive. Let's talk about performance now. Here we have the Crystal Disk Mark score for a single drive. This is straight on the SATA controller. Uh, the numbers are pretty close to what they should be, very consistent with what Seagate claims. And then we'll add in some numbers from a dual drive configuration. This is roughly RAID 1. I'm using Windows storage spaces here as a software RAID controller. Uh, your numbers may be slightly different depending on the kind of software RAID that you use or if you're using a hardware controller. I don't have those available to test with, so you're going to have to take it for what it is. Uh, as we can see, the numbers change somewhat. Uh, they're a little bit better in some scenarios where we expect to see them better and a little bit worse, especially in the right performance, where we expect to see that performance a little bit worse as well. And now let's add what is probably the closest thing that I have on hand to the mix, which is a pair of Seagate 8 terabyte 256 cache 7200 RPM Skyhawk drives. Now these aren't exactly the same uh, spec-wise, but they're very, very close. Um, the, the biggest difference is in the uh, size of the drive. And we can see here that the X14 just annihilates the Skyhawk drives in what is pretty much exactly the same configuration. Read write speed is dramatically better on the X14 drives. Um, that's not entirely unexpected, but I was a little bit surprised by the magnitude of the difference. And then just for giggles, this is another RAID array, and a quotation mark RAID array. This is a six drive. It's more like a RAID 10 kind of configuration using storage spaces. Uh, these aren't the most modern drives, and they're also not the same kind of drive. So it's not that comparable, but it is an interesting data point where we do see better read performance in some scenarios, as we expect, where more spindles equals better reads in some scenarios. But what surprised me the most is that it's not, it's not a slam dunk. Even though there's six spindles, the two X14 drives are within spitting distance in almost every scenario or better than the six drive array and then write performance um, is massively better which is to be expected given the the parameters of this six drive array so hopefully you found that useful if you did go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel if you have any questions or comments you want me to test something uh, just drop that below thanks